This is Skellington, my homemade Halloween decoration that kind of watches you. It's using a Raspberry Pi with a camera. There it is in there. And OpenCV to do object recognition and tracking. <laughs> Let's do a dog test. Come here, girl. Come on. So this project was surprisingly easy. I pasted the code below in the description. You can see how short it is. It was a lot of fun. It was a great way to get into Raspberry Pi and OpenCV. So the rest of the video will go over the hardware build and walk through the software. The first thing you do is install the Raspberry Pi OS on a SD card, which you can get from their website. And here's the hardware. I've got the Raspberry Pi Zero and this camera. I got the one that doesn't have the IR filter to work better at night. Note you do need a special cable that fits into the smaller Pi Zero slot. Here I'm installing that. You just pull out this clip and then push it back in and then do the same thing on the Pi Zero. Uh, the clips are actually a little delicate as I found out. So don't do that. I was able to just wedge the pieces back in there and it seemed to hold well enough to work. It's bad. I also got this servo bonnet, which is useful because the Pi doesn't have great timing. So you, this thing takes care of all the precise timing to drive the servo. And it also keeps your Pi from being browned out when it when the power draws to the servo. I have a USB extension that lets me plug in a mouse and a keyboard, and uh, the power goes in there to the other USB port, and then I've got a mini to regular HDMI adapter so I can see what I'm doing. Um, that's my USB to barrel connector that I use to drive the servos. I followed this guide from Circuit Design to get up and running. Um, this actually walks you through being able to control it from another computer without having to plug in the monitor. Um, you do that through VNC, which is kind of neat. I ended up not doing that, but you can do this. And it walks you through some basic um, configurations you need to do. Like you need to turn on the camera. I2C is how the Pi communicates with the server board, so you have to turn that on. And then you can check to see if it sees the servo by looking at that number 40 on the fourth row there. So it, it can talk to it now. And then you just install this Adafruit circuit Python library, um, which doesn't take a long time. Although I will say that all of the installations take forever because the Pi Zero is not a very fast computer. I skipped a lot of the time in that little shot. So then you plug it in and it's like three lines to get the servo working. It's great. And then I can use the uh, command prompt to just in real time change the angles. So moving on to enabling the camera, open up the preferences again, go to interfaces, check the camera. Then I have to reboot the Pi. Once it reboots, you can see the basic code to get something out of the camera. You just do import Pi camera and then camera start preview. And I, get, I have the camera kind of looking up at the monitor here and then there's a live feed. So four lines of code. So installing OpenCV was definitely the hardest part of the entire project. Uh, this took me many hours involving uh, two to three hours of just getting my Raspberry Pi so messed up that I had to format it and start over completely. 
This guide from Single Board Bytes seemed to get me the furthest, and uh, it involves a lot of steps, starting with this sudo apt update and upgrade, which by themselves took about two hours to run. That uh, Pi Zero doesn't really have a lot of horsepower, so there's a lot of waiting for things to install. And then there's a, like a thousand dependencies you have to install. And even after I followed all these instructions, it still didn't work. I was getting errors like the NumPy library wasn't installed, even though it was. I ended up having to uninstall that and then reinstall it. And I think that finally got it going. A lot of these guides will recommend using Python virtual environments. I didn't end up doing that because I was just going to use this board for one project, um, just an FYI. So good luck with this part. But if you make it through the end of that dark tunnel, you can type import CV2 and it shouldn't give errors and it should spit out a version number. And then here you can see some basic first operations I'm doing with it. This code is from an Instructables guide that I initially followed, but then later I switched to this guide on PySource to do the actual object tracking with OpenCV. This was fantastic, and he's got all the source code, although it's only a couple lines of code that you can use to grab it. His demo uh, goes through actually counting cars on a highway traffic camera, so it's pretty neat. And the bulk of the work is really done with the OpenCV library. Here you can see some of my initial test. The white areas are the blobs that it's detecting. And then here it's drawing an outline around those blobs. Here you'll notice some of the outlines are within other outlines, but you can actually just give a command to the library to just give you the outer most outlines, which was really convenient. And uh, here you can see what that looks like as I'm walking around the room. So every once in a while it detects something that's not me. I probably could have added in some logic to, I guess, ignore just single frame detections, but it works well even if I'm really small in the frame. I've also shrunk the uh, overall resolution to speed up the frame rate a little bit. So this is my first test. Uh, with a placeholder skeleton head. And you can see it tracking the camera windows in the very upper left there. So this is where I'm actually linking like the coordinate of that box that's detected to the angle of the servo. So with the software working, time to do a little surgery. Okay. Maybe I wouldn't be the best brain surgeon. It's not a straight line. It's a surprisingly tough skull. Shake out the skull dust. So what I'm hoping is I can attach my uh, servo glued onto the brain stem here and uh, somehow the actuator arm attached to the skull. Okay, I need a little bit of an extension cord because I'm going to put all the electronics in some sort of plastic box, not inside the head. Let's put this on first. Okay, make sure we got them both wired up the right way. This would be easier with a heat gun, but I'm just gonna use the edge of the soldering iron. Okay, the plan is to epoxy in the servo here. Maybe drill a hole for the wire to come out there and put another hole in the back of the skull and have like a part of a coat hanger glued onto this thing and then 
as this turns, it'll hopefully rotate the head and this thing can slide in, out, in and out of the skull to, in case there's, you know, the distance between the motor and the skull changes a little bit. Yep. Okay, my epoxy is hopefully dry. It's been a few hours. Let's see if this whole setup will work. Slide the coat hanger through the hole in the head. And then I'll try to... It's not staying uh, parallel with the axis of my motor, so this part is gonna need to slide up and down or... Okay, I took the uh, servo arm off and I set the servo to 90 degrees, which should be the halfway point. It hits the bird this way, so I can't go that far that way. I also glued a little piece of wood on here to make this side um, sturdier because the head was bending a little. Ooh, it's kind of fast. 140. 60. Okay, 160 might be our limit in that direction. Oh, that's creepy. All right, first run. Uh oh. Don't fall over now. Oh. It kind of jumps when it first sees you. Reassembly. Why can't you fix a duct tape? I'm gonna do a short code walkthrough just to show how simple this is. First thing you do is you just set up a video capture. Uh, you set the horizontal and vertical resolution, which I'm only doing 160 by 120 to keep the frame rate up, but it seems to track okay. Uh, and then there's just this thing called create background subtractor MOG that creates a object detector and that seems to do all of the magic. And then from there I've got just a constant loop. It reads a frame. Oh, you can define a region of interest if you only want to look in a portion of the frame. And then this is what finds the uh, edges of those blobs. So you pass it this mask um, and it spits out both uh, the contours themselves and also information about uh, how they um, relate to each other. Like this hierarchy variable can tell you whether one is inside an another. And by setting this variable, R-E-T-R external, um, I'm able to just pull out the largest ones in this loop, I go through the contours and all I'm doing is trying to find the biggest one and I'm making sure that the area is over 200. So I'm ignoring small ones. A lot of times it won't even detect anything, but if it does, then my detections array will be greater than zero. So I'll uh, just draw a green rectangle around it so I can debug it. And then here's where I actually set the uh, skeleton head angle. So I use this remap function, which remaps from the pixels of my screen, like whether it's on the far left side of whatever zero out to 160 would be the highest it would be to the angle of my servo. And then I do something called an exponential average to smooth this out a little. Basically what this is doing is it's taking, it's taking 25% of the new value plus 75% of the previous average. And this ends up kind of taking into account the past five or so values that it was at. So it'll never move very fast because it's 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 weighting uh, some of the history more than the latest value. Um, this is just to show the image on the screen for debugging. And then this thing lets it quit if you hit the escape key. And that's that's it.
onto the hole. It's probably bad for heat dissipation. Hello. And then I'm gonna plug my server power and my Raspberry Pi power into here, and I can monitor it through my remote VNC. So that's it. It's a little twitchy at times, but I think that just adds to the effect. Uh, overall, it was a great way to dive into the Raspberry Pi and OpenCV world. Um, all the parts and code are listed below in the description.